Hello everyone, my name is Karthik Godavarthi and I am the faculty of anthropology here at Vajiram and Ravi. In today's class, we shall be looking at a general introduction of the order primates. The study of the primates is called primatology. And if you are wondering why we are looking at uh, primatology and primatological studies in anthropology, the answer is pretty simple. I am sure you know that we, the Homo sapiens, are also primates. We are the members of this particular order primates, which is the part and parcel of the larger class of vertebrates, the mammals. And it was uh, Carl von Linnaeus who has given the name primates to this particular order. And the reason he chose to call this order primates is because primates translates to literally the first or the foremost and it also implies the highest because the Homo sapiens represent the zenith of uh, organic evolution, this particular order that accommodates us and our species obviously deserves a name called primates, which is the first, the foremost and the highest. Now, the reason why we are studying primates is mainly because there are certain defining features of our species that unfortunately we do not know the evolution of. There are certain traits that are uh, defining the Homo sapiens and their evolution cannot be understood from the fossil evidences is because the human fossils are very fragmentary, very scanty and there is also no continuity in the fossil discoveries so far. And these defining features for which we require more information is one, the evolution of bipedalism. Number two, the erect posture, which is obviously related to the first one. And number three, a very complex brain. And number four, and very importantly, the cultural and the social behavior. Now, these defining features of the Homo sapiens cannot be understood from the evolutionary evidences alone. And the only way we probably can make some kind of conclusions is on the basis of studying our closest relatives in the animal kingdom who are obviously the primates. Primates is one of the largest orders within the class Mammalia. Now by virtue of being mammals, we share certain common features with the other mammals. And let us look at certain mammalian traits that bind all the mammals together. There are close to 4000 plus uh, species in this particular class Mammalia and the ones that the primates share with the other mammals include number one obviously the primates are multicellular organisms more technically they are called the metazoans or the complex animals and uh, the second important mammalian feature is the presence of the mammary glands and this is the reason why in fact this particular class is called mammalia. Number three, the presence of fur on the body and when it comes to the humans obviously we have the body hair. And this is another feature that the mammals have in common, which all the primates, including us, share with them. And number four, we give birth to 
the live ones and this feature is technically called as vivipari mammals except some few mammals you know do not lay eggs but they give birth to the live offspring another defining feature of the mammals is the long gestation compared to the other organisms uh, in this world and long gestation implies that the offspring even before they are given birth to spend a prolonged period of time in the mother's womb and that is one of the reproductive efficiencies that the mammals are characteristic of and this feature is something that has been taken to its logical conclusions in the context of the order primates and uh, number six is a characteristic feature called heterodontism hetero means many and dontism many types actually and dontism is teeth and mammals are characterized by having different kinds of specialized teeth unlike let us say some of the fish and uh, other species of animals which uh, probably have one type of uh, teeth in their jaws and number seven I'm sure you must have studied this in your school but nothing wrong in having a recap homeothermy and homeothermy is a feature where the animal is maintaining its core body temperature irrespective of the temperature outside this is what we also commonly refer to as warm bloodedness or warm blooded animals and that is another feature of uh, the mammals and another important feature number 8 is the presence of uh, enucleated rbc's the red blood corpuscles in the mammals do not have a nucleus now nucleus i'm sure you know in cell biology uh, you must have studied it that it's responsible for the reproduction and it is the place where the genetic material is stored but rbc's do not have a nucleus in the case of the mammals and since in the absence of rbc's a cell cannot divide but the new rbc's are produced in the mammals continuously in the bone marrow and especially through a process what is known as hemopoiesis and then the mammals also are characterized by the presence of a, a diaphragm a thick muscular sheath that separates the body cavity into the upper thorax and the lower abdomen and uh, finally the mammals also are characterized by having a four chambered heart and having a four chambered heart improves the cardiovascular efficiency of these animals so these are the characteristic features of mammals there are some more but that's not required for us but these characteristic features of mammals are also shared by the order primates because the primate order is a part and parcel of this class mammalia now coming more specifically to the order primates there are very broadly three types of primates that exist in the world they are broadly classified into the prosimians the anthropoids the apes and of course we also have humans but we are not looking at the humans now we are only looking at the non-human primates the word prosimian is derived from pro plus simian which means early simian in latin means a monkey 
and prosimians are the lowest of the primates the first batch of the primates that have evolved on this earth in fact uh, primates have evolved from insectivores uh, when these insectivores have taken to the trees in order to survive from the carnivore predatorship we'll see that in our subsequent classes and anthropoids they are essentially monkeys and there are two types of monkeys we call them the new world monkeys and the old world monkeys and this classification is not only based on the biological differences between them but also the geographical distribution and we're going to see that in a short while and apes again we can classify them into little apes or smaller apes and uh, the large or the great apes and uh, the smaller apes include the gibbons whereas the three very important great apes that we are going to look at very closely in our classes are of the chimpanzee the chimp the gorilla and the orangutan so this is a very broad classification of the order primates and we will be looking at a detailed classification subsequently and uh, this slide essentially captures the number of uh, species and the genera that are there genera is the plural for genus there are around uh, uh, 51 genera and about 170 species identified till date but we do not have the exact number and probably there are much more that are existing in this world that are yet to be discovered this is especially so in central and south american rainforest and because of the thick canopy and uh, the, the primates almost spending their entire life on the top of the trees makes it all the more difficult for primatologists and zoologists to know of their existence leave alone study them and then uh, uh, probably about 230 to 275 is the approximate uh, guess about the number of species that may exist and they live in the forest areas and the woodland areas of the world and they are distributed in the new and the old world and this is the map that gives you a general idea as to the natural distribution of the primates i'm sure you must have studied in geography that we we divide the world into old and new world the african Euro, uh, european and asian continents together constitute the old world and the primates that are restricted to africa asia uh, south asia uh, southeast asia java borneo sumatra and other important islands these are called the old world primates and these old world primates include old world monkeys as well as the apes when we look at the classification in a greater detail we shall look at those differences and the central and south american uh, regions constitute the new world primates and most of these primates essentially are uh, living in the rainforest now this is the natural uh, distribution of the order primates and we are only focusing on the non-human primates and uh, if we take the humans also i'm sure uh, we need to color the whole map because there's not a single region on this earth that the humans have not occupied and we are the ones who are the most adaptable and can survive in any type of an ecosystem uh, mainly because of our ability to adapt ourselves making use of culture uh, that's a topic that we will be discussing subsequently in the chapter on ecological anthropology and uh, let us look at some basic uh, or general characteristics of the order primates and the first and probably one of the most uh, interesting features of the order primates is the sheer diversity in the size of the primates we have uh, uh, primates like this mouse lemur which is a prosimian that weighs only about 30 grams and probably fits on your palm 
And then we have the gigantic uh, mountain gorilla, which can actually weigh almost up to 200 kilograms. And this diversity in the primates is one of the most striking features of this order. In fact, one of the reasons why we find it extremely difficult to define what makes a primate a primate is because of this diversity in size and many other features that we are going to look at subsequently in this particular chapter. And uh, uh, most of these primates, number two, are uh, uh, essentially adapted to arboreality. Arboreality or arborealism is an adaptation to tree living. In fact, almost all the features of the primates and including some of our own features like erect posture and these grasping hands and uh, others, the stereoscopic vision, have all evolved essentially to enable the primates to adapt, uh, you know, wonderfully to an arboreal environment. And this arborealism is essentially the driving force behind the primate evolution. Almost all the primates except the humans, you know, spend some time on the top of the trees. Some of the primates like the New World monkeys, uh, Central and uh, South America, in fact, spend their entire life on the top of the trees. In fact, they don't even come down for water because they trap the moisture that is present in that uh, highly humid rainforest and the uh, precipitation on the top of the trees. And even us as humans, you know, we still retain that instinct that whenever, especially in our childhood, whenever we see a tree that's accessible, there was this instinct to climb it. And where do you think all these come from? And where do you think we have gained that ability to climb the trees? Is mainly because we share this with our cousins uh, in the animal kingdom, the other primates, the non-human primates. And another very interesting feature that uh, you can notice in this particular chart is the tendency of having a erectness in the upper body of these primates. You see all the primates here show kind of a tendency of erectness in the upper body. And this tendency of erectness in the upper body, especially when they are standing or sitting, is something that probably could have laid the foundation for the erect posture in us, the Homo sapiens. So this is a point that we shall be exploring subsequently while discussing the evolution of the primates and also the evolution of the human beings. And uh, the third important feature is locomotion. In our syllabus, we will be looking at the primate locomotions in a great detail and the adaptations that have happened to support these types. But very uh, generally speaking, there are four important types of locomotions that we can see amongst the primates. The first one is called vertical clinging. The second one is uh, brachiation. The third one is called quadrupedalism or quadrupedalism. And number four is uh, bipedalism. Vertical clinging is something that we see in the prosimians, the lowest of the primates. You have the lemurs uh, the le uh, and the tarsiers, etc. Brachiation is something we see especially amongst the gibbons and also the orangutans. Now these are apes. And quadrupedalism is seen amongst the monkeys both the new world as well as uh, the uh, uh, old world monkeys. And of course, bipedalism is something that is exclusively seen amongst the humans. 
Now we're going to see this in detail subsequently, but there are many subtypes, especially in brachiation, you have something called as modified brachiation and a typical brachiation. Quadrupedalism is again arboreal and terrestrial. Quadrupedalism or quadra four pedal legs or limbs and quadrupedalism is where an animal is deploying all its uh, four limbs for locomotion. And there are monkeys who are quadrupedal on the top of the trees. We call that arboreal quadrupedalism. And there are monkeys that are uh, quadrupedal on the ground and we call this the terrestrial quadrupedalism. And bipedalism, of course, is something that is uniquely human, where we are using only our hind limbs for propulsion and locomotion. And the forelimbs or the hands, you know, have become free of locomotion and we use them only for uh, manipulation and uh, we will be looking at these uh, subsequently. Another important uh, and interesting aspect about the primates is their diet. You know most of the other organisms in this world have uh, adapted themselves to consuming only one type of food. You know take the case of the other mammals for example like herbivores can only consume the vegetable diet and the carnivores are the ones who consume the uh, non-vegetarian or uh, meat diet. But uh, primates, you know, are omnivorous, means they can eat anything. And in fact, they have uh, specialized themselves to eat any type of food. And the reason why this kind of uh, omnivorous diet is possible amongst the, pra, uh, the order primates is mainly because of the presence of different types of dentition or teeth. We'll discuss the different types of teeth in a short while. And what does the omnivorous diet entail? I mean, they can eat uh, fruits, obviously. Uh, leaves. In fact, there's a monkey called the colubine monkey, which only consumes leaves and not nothing else. Whereas the other types of monkeys can consume fruits and uh, leaves, nuts, seeds. And primates are also known to eat insects. Probably one of the mechanisms through which they get their uh, protein diet from and some animals like chimpanzees and uh, baboons uh, and also of course the humans they also consume meat and this is the kind of the complexity of the diet of the primates and since they are surviving on almost all the types of foods that are available in their environment or in their ecosystem or habitat, we call this the omnivorous diet. And as I told you, this omnivorous diet is possible because of the presence of uh, different specialized teeth. And uh, I'm sure you know this, that uh, uh, even the humans have uh, these uh, same types of teeth there are four types of teeth that we can come across the for cutting and biting. We have the incisors and the canines. Well, the canines have reduced in size in the case of the human beings, but uh, they are uh, uh, projecting and long canines in the case of the monkeys and also certain apes. The incisors are the front teeth and these incisors and the canines together are performing the function of cutting and biting. And behind the canines uh, are the premolars and then the molars. And these premolars and the molars are helping the primate in crushing and grinding. Normally, we refer to the molars as the grinding teeth, isn't it? And this crushing and grinding is possible because of the premolars and the molars. 
and this specialized teeth has given the primates the ability to actually survive in different kind of environments accessing different kinds of food and that is one of the successes that the primates have uh, been able to achieve during the course of their evolution and then the primates have a relatively less dense hair on the body or fur on the body and relative to what? Relative to the, some other mammals which have very thick coat of hair or fur on the body. Another important noteworthy characteristic feature in the primate morphology is the presence of a prehensile tail in some primates. And the prehensile tail is the one that uh, can be used by the primates as a grasping organ. We humans have a prehensile hand. We are able to grasp objects mainly because of this ability of ours in manipulating with our fingers. And this is giving us what is called as a power grip. And in the case of the monkeys, especially the new world monkeys, they have a prehensile tail and I'm sure you must have seen this either in the nature or probably in a zoo or in a documentary that uh, some of these monkeys can actually wind uh, their tail around a branch and can hang and they use it virtually as the fifth hand. And uh, that is another important feature. And coming to another decisive uh, uh, feature during the course of evolution is the reproduction amongst the primates. The primates belong to a type of mammals which I told you earlier called the placental mammals. But the presence of the placenta actually improves the reproductive efficiency of these group of animals. And uh, we said that they have a long gestation already. And uh, the primates or the primate mothers, they normally give birth to one or two offspring at a time. The primates do not have litters like let us say the dogs and the cats, you know, but they normally give birth to one and probably maximum two. And this is again an adaptation to the arborealism or the tree living. You can't expect a primate mother to actually hold on to a litter full of babies and uh, live on the top of the trees. That will endanger not only the offspring's life, but it also endangers the mother's life. So normally primates restrict uh, to having one offspring at a particular time and another important uh, and interesting aspect about the primates that probably led to you know the regulation of sex and sexuality in the human subsequently is the fact that the primates have a year-long fertility they have a capacity to uh, reproduce throughout the year and then uh, something uh, which anthropologists are particularly interested in, in the study of the primates and we are going to see the various forms of this particular behavior in detail, which is the social behavior. In fact, many primate uh, behavioralists, there is also a specialization called cultural primatology. Uh, most of the scientists like Jane Goodall, for example, and uh, Birut Galdikas and uh, Diane Fossey, uh, who are also known as the Leakey's Angels or the Trimates, 
You know, they studied uh, especially the three great apes, the chimpanzee, orangutan and gorilla. And uh, all of them have independently concluded that the primate social behavior is actually a, a, a simplified version of the human social behavior itself. The primates are probably one of those very few groups of animals in this world who have a, a very, uh, I would say, a sophisticated social behavior. Number one, they are gregarious. In a sense that most of the primates live in uh, groups. And number two, most of the primates are diurnal. Diurnal, they are active during the daytime. And probably by virtue of being active during the daytime, which is also the time when most of the carnivores are also active, the primates must have chosen to have a gregarious behavior. Gregarious behavior is group living. And uh, there are some nocturnal species, like especially some of the prosimians, which are active during the night. And these nocturnal species are not gregarious, but they are solitary. That's the opposite of gregariousness. And obviously, when you are uh, hunting in the night, you know, you're not supposed to make too much of noise, uh, lest you may disturb the uh, prey and probably you may attract the other predators who predate upon you. So maybe the nocturnal species uh, hence must have taken to living in uh, living alone or solitary life, whereas most of the primates, all the others are gregarious. They live in uh, groups that uh, vary in size and it may uh, include uh, maybe a few uh, animals to a large collection of uh, these monkeys or apes. And then another uh, interesting aspect about the private social behavior is their extreme sense of territoriality. They very actively defend their territory and they are very conscious about them. In fact, they don't allow the other uh, groups of animals and they don't even allow their own kind if they don't belong to the same groups as theirs. And this is uh, probably something that pro uh, was taken again to its logical conclusion when it came to the human primate subsequently. And uh, the primates actually are not living in any uh, general aggregate of people. The gregariousness is not an aggregate of uh, monkeys and apes, but the primates actually live in social groups, something we are going to see in great detail subsequently, the social behavior of the primates. And uh, the social groups are the groups which entail some kind of a reciprocity amongst the members of the group. It's not a random collection of many monkeys or apes. It's not just a collection of one type of monkeys or apes. They are social groups. They respond and react to each other. They communicate with each other. And this is uh, pretty similar, probably a little less organized, but pretty similar to the human social groups. Uh, and uh, all the members, especially the males of the Groups are the ones who defend the boundary of uh, that particular group of uh, the primates. And this social behavior amongst the primates probably must have evolved because of two selective pressures during evolution. The one is predation. The second one is the nutritional efficiency. Predation and nutritional efficiency. Primates, uh, you know, uh, are uh, a majority of them are small or average sized uh, animals. 
and the primates uh, even though they belong to uh, the class mammalia they are living within the same ecosystem as other mammals and uh, one of them obviously are the mighty and the fierce carnivores. In fact, one of the theories for the evolution of the primates says that uh, primates evolved on the top of the trees mainly because they wanted to escape from the carnivore predatorship on the ground. The primates took to the top of the trees to escape the carnivores. And predation is something that has been a selective pressure on the primates. Predation where you become uh, the game for the other hunters and here the carnivores. And group living probably is uh, giving them a kind of an uh, advantage, an evolutionary advantage in order to escape from or falling prey to the carnivore predatorship easily or carnivore predation easily. And the second one is nutritional efficiency. If you have multiple groups uh, or I'm sorry, if you have multiple individuals in your groups, then you will be able to harness the resources and harness the energy in whatever form more efficiently. And these two probably are the important uh, motivators for the primates to have taken to a social life. And we shall be looking at the social behavior also in a great detail. And uh, finally, you can also note the point that the size of the group normally depends upon the nature of the environment in which these groups exist. Obviously, in those ecosystems, where the natural resources are uh, scarce, you will find less dense groups. Whereas in uh, tropical rainforests and uh, um, in all those areas where the natural resources are plenty, in those groups obviously the density of the primate social groups will be high. And uh, these are the very general characteristics of the primates. And uh, one thing we have to remember is that uh, there are no defining features of this particular group of animals, the order primates, that every primate in this uh, group is sharing. There is a variation in size, there is a variation in habitat, there is also a variation in uh, the nature of diet, there is a variation also in their social behaviors, and this is the diversity that makes us uh, or makes it difficult for us to define what makes a primate a primate. It's not easy to define a primate. They share a range of characteristics. And these range of characteristics are shared by the primates to a different degree. And uh, that's a very important uh, theory that we will be picking up immediately. And that is the primate evolutionary trends, which is given by one of the foremost British uh, primatologists. His name is... Uh, Wilfred Legros Clark. And this is an important uh, domain that you are expected to study in this particular chapter. So, let us take up the primate evolutionary trends in the next half of the class.